Hey y'all, I'm Roger Lopez, part of the technical marketing team at Red Hat. And today what I wanted to show is the ability to use Ansible Automation Platform, specifically Automation Service Catalog and Automation Controller, and how together they can deliver a self-service platform. The goal of setting up a self-service platform is to provide your users or developers a method they can use to deploy software faster and smarter. And from an organizational standpoint, by understanding what your users and developers need, you can enforce your best practices, compliance, and security. In this small demo, you're going to see how I turn the process of creating a virtual machine into a self-service task that any user can go off and use. So let's get started. So here on my left, I have my self-service catalog, which is um, automation service catalog. I'm going to log in as my user. And on the right-hand screen, you'll see that I have my Ansible Automation Platform controller. So here you're seeing the dashboard view. So as a particular user, in this, in this case, I would be a developer. And as a developer, I have access to this developer store. And within this developer store, I have two scenarios. Uh, one scenario that I can do or use is uh, creating a virtual machine, and the other one is backing up my volumes. In this first one, we wanna create a virtual machine. So the whole goal as a developer is, I don't necessarily care about um, where my virtual machine lives or how do I uh, create it. I just want to be able to essentially use it, right? And from that particular purpose, uh, what we're trying to establish is as you are a developer, we're going to go off and create this virtual machine and go off and be able to use it. So all I need to do as a developer is essentially go to the particular developer store as I've done. I see that I have a uh, creating of a VM a product available to me, I can go off and select order. And when I select order, what I'm trying to do is I just need to fill out a few details. Typically, these details are going to vary based on what you're trying to create a, let's say, a self-service uh, platform for, as far as the administrators go. But from a developer standpoint, I'm probably going to need to provide a name. So here we'll call it Roger Test One. Um, we're going to provide, provide it a key pair. In my case, we'll call it the RLOPS key. So that allows me to connect to my um, virtual machine that's being created. And then I need to give it a flavor, right? So here I have a t-shirt sizes of small, medium, large. I'll create a small one. Um, I've been given options of different storage capacity that I can use. In this case, I don't need much. Um, particularly also what instance where it might reside. You may or may not have access to this, depending on how um, your administrators uh, want to kind of lock you down with regards to uh, what you can see when you're creating this. But in this case, you can see that. And then of course, who is gonna own this instance, which is the person who logged in, which in my case is me. So when I go off and click on confirm, what this does is it goes off and creates an orders for me and it puts an order in the orders page. So in this particular order, I can see different order details. These are the parameters that were filled out and the progression of that, right? And then uh, if you had to get your order approved, this is where the approval process would go through. You would actually go off and uh, maybe you have a uh, administrator that goes off and ensures that yes, we do want to allow you to create this virtual machine. In this particular case, we are approving by default. Um, and then once that order is complete, what we would ha what see have happened, and from the Ansible administrative side of things, what it does is that it kicks off a job. So we're actually going to see two jobs kick off. One is my uh, Ansible Fest self-service project, which is essentially grabbing the project from Git, which I'll show shortly. And then it's going off and actually creating a virtual machine and running the virtual machine process. And one of the things you'll notice here is that it's, as it's running, it's trying to launch the virtual machine um, and, and do that before it uh, provides me a virtual machine that then is going to provide a notification to the user saying, yes, now I have this virtual machine. And you can do this in multiple ways. You can 
provide a Slack notification, you can provide an email address, it really, it really, uh, an email notification, it really just depends on um, what you're trying to do as an organization and, and focus on. So in this particular case, the job is done. The developer never had to log into Automation Controller to see any of this, it just happened, right? So then from the AWS side of it, your AWS, AWS admin, right? He might be going and checking, okay, what, what's being created? And you can see here, this Roger test one was created. This virtual machine does exist. And we can pull information about that particular VM. And the nice thing about this too, is that we can create policies around this. So for example, maybe this is a virtual machine that only gets to live for X amount of time, right? It's for the day. So it's only available for eight hours or a few hours or whatever, and it gets destroyed, right? But it gives your developers something that they can use and access, right? Providing that full self-service. Now, from a administrative perspective, right? What did it take to, to build this, right? So I have here a collection that I've created that has some roles. Um, this one has an AWS role and it has some tasks. And essentially what's happening here, what you'll see is I have this um, 10 create EC2 instance, right? So basically a Ansible administrator and an AWS administrator would get together and be like, okay, what are the things that we need to do to make sure that our developers get the resources they need and we're making sure that we are up with compliance right so in this particular case um you have a couple of tasks uh for setting the different uh t-shirt sizes we have some set facts to do this um and then we actually have the amazon aws ec2 instance task which is using this particular module and it goes off and creates the actual ec2 instance for us then we gather that information um, for that particular instance and we can actually do things like plan that object uh, if we need to use it for other information but the key here is we're using it to create this EC2 instance so this 18 to 14 that's that's the the meat of, of this process and then um, if we look at the other tasks the slack notification what this does is it uses the community general slack module um, it provides essentially a token that we're using and once we gather that token we can go and provide information to our particular user so this is just a uh, slack notification that's happening on a specific channel called the ansible test demo channel and in here there's a bot called the ansible test bot that's going to send this information to this channel based on the input that it's gathering um, from the creation of that ec2 instance and with that you basically have a working automation, right? Um, the nice thing too as well is you have, I've done all this through templates. So um, this is the create VM template here that does this particular work. You click on details. We can see some of the details here. Um, and some of these, for example, are uh, privileged variables that are being set so that's kind of one of the nice things too as the ansible admin is i didn't have to put some of these uh variables that i didn't want my developer to know or maybe just didn't want to make publicly available but i can put them directly in the template itself right so like the image id that i want to use or the security group that i want to use and stuff like that and with this particular information i can go off and uh, put it in, in the in this particular template and I can go off and use it. And from the perspective of the developer, all he has to do is click an order, give a name, give a location of where it is, uh, what key he wants to use, how big he wants it to be as far as the VM is concerned, and you can go off and use it. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this demo. This kind of gives you an idea of how you can use self-service as a way to provide resources to your users to your developers and really make it kind of seamless as possible hope you enjoyed it thank you